Lefty's batter's box to get us started here on this Sunday afternoon. First pitch is off the plate for a ball. Can't really yesterday went two for three with two walks, a consistent starter. Grounds it over to Hanks, who takes it himself, one retired. Good start there for the sophomore. Fox on the mound, and Canarilla is just dangerous in the batter's box. Hit 388 last year, 339. So to get a quick out like that against this tough, tough lineup for the Tigers is a good start for Fox. Doesn't get any easier, though, as Jimmy Obertop now settles in to the impact players so far this weekend. Top fouls back the first pitch he sees. Top yesterday, a little bit of a quieter day, one for five. Take a look at the Clemson jerseys today. Got a bit of a USA look. Over top behind in the count quickly. Pitch low, Fox can't get the first baseman to bite. Over top the transfer from Michigan coming with Backage. Backage in his second year as Top comes in. Grand transfer for this Clemson program. Over top's getting the start at first base today. He's behind the play yesterday. Two he two fouled away. He hits one hard there and uh I'd never played first base before coming into this year and had to make the transition over there, splitting time between catch and first base. And he's been dynamite with the bat on the ear, but that's not a good way to start for him. He's rung up looking. Rory Fox picks up his first strikeout of the day. And Fox just froze him there. That was as middle middle as he could get. Over top knew it. Started his walk back into the dugout. And Fox has got two quick outs against his dangerous Tigers lineup. Blake Wright drills one foul just by the bag. Blake Wright, such a potent player. Part of the Golden Spikes Award midseason watch list. Along with a slew of ACC players on that watch list, just showing you how strong the conference is this year and has come to play and so is Blake Wright. He drills this one deep to center field, backing is Williams at the wall, makes the grab. Wow, TJ Williams. Yesterday he came in the ninth for a pinch hit and got one over the fence to move the game Three to two as it would quickly close one batter later with Williams. First pitch he sees fouled back into the netting. A one chopped foul. Fans in the count to 0 and 2. Gives a little bit of momentum into the box as well and make a big play there as he's had momentum so far this season as well. Yeah, I mean, the numbers jump off the page. Hitting 394 right now, and this is a guy in Williams that for a large part of his career, he was near the bottom of the lineup, consistently strong with his glove, and would be relied upon to put down a bunt. One, two, drop strike that Gerald will throw to Obertop for the first out today. And a good K right there by Kanak, but as mentioned, Williams has really been strong on the year, and strikeouts aren't super common for him, so it's good work by Kanak there, getting a quick out. Now David Glancy will go up against Kanak. He looks at a ball. He made his presence known early in this series by hitting a homer over the left field fence on Friday. 1-1 pitch, drilled 
into the glove of right to his knee and up with it and pulling Obertop off the bag, but keeps his foot applied to away. Smooth play there by the senior at third base. Hard head ball on the ground by Glancy, and he was able to glove it and make a strong throw over. Over top with a good stretch over there at first. And it was a close play, and over top had to just get his cleats on there and be able to snag the bag and hold it. Using every inch he can. And you see another look at the hard throw by right across the diamond. As Moreno fouls off the first pitch he sees. Stevan Moreno has power to his name this year. Six home runs on the year. As the 0-2 pitch to Moreno is swung on and missed. It's a one, two, three inning for the Tigers in the field. We go to the second. Please. Set a standard for success there. Led them to the College World Series, and they were the runner-up in 2019. And now he comes to this Clemson roster, turned them around last year. Really strong year. They won the ACC Tournament Championship, and he's got this team on pace to be one of the best in the nation right now. They're sitting in at number two by most rankings. And it's a balanced team that's really led by its rotation and the top of this lineup. Mathis has an even count, shows bunt. Puts a beauty down to Fox, who fields it cleanly to get the out. You talk about a coach comes in first year, you win the conference, you can only go up from there. All right, and uh, give a quick point here to Fox. That's a good effort on a pitcher fielding position as he's able to bounce off the mound and make a hard throw over to first to get the first out. but. And it's really Backage's experience. He comes over, as you mentioned, from a really decorated career at Michigan and carries them around in their first year. Clemson, he does. And now he's got them on pack to try to make a run back to Omaha. Jacob Hindelider pops one into shallow right field. Moreno is called off by Gump, who comes out with it and can't make the grab, diving into the turf. Wynn brought that one back all the way to where Moreno was standing, and Gump can't hold on when he made contact with the turf. That was a ball in the no man's land right there, but Gump calls off Moreno, and Moreno didn't really have a good angle on it, and Gump comes all the way in, but that wind just brought it down. It's blowing towards the left field pole right now, and um, on a long run, just isn't able to bring that one in. And it's costly for the Irish. Will Taylor looks at a strike. And will give Hindelider a double for the hit. Keeping the Irish errors only to 14 on the year. Pitches away. Well, that's a tough play there for both of them. I mean, for Moreno, he's got to be trailing backwards and backpedaling, so it's him. It's hard for him to get under it, and Gumpf came a long way away, just wasn't able to bring it in. A one to Taylor. Popped up in fair territory. Hinks calls off Fox, who makes the grab. That one wasn't easy for Hinks there in first either. So the wind here already clearly playing a, playing a factor in a lot of these pop-ups. Yeah, gusts will be to 17 miles an hour here today. A little bit of inclement weather on the horizon. If you can get a ball up into the atmosphere, it might carry a little bit with how strong the wind is pushing. Going from the first base bag all the way to third base corner as Fox will check back. And a ladder in. We well, saw the wind play in on Friday in yep. that ninth inning, two run shot by Jimmy Overtop. He hit a pop fly that was carrying out to right field, and the wind was able to tuck it around the right field pole. Put the Tigers up. Rockney grounds it over to Penny at shorts. 
and Hindeleiter is left stranded at second. Simon Bumgart fouls off his first pitch. Bumgart transfer from Tulane. Walks out a strike to put himself behind 0-2. Pitch upstairs. Knock deals. Breaking ball into the dirt. That Baumgart swings at, and it's out the third K for Knock. We said he had strikeout stuff. Well, that's a, a pitch to swing at there. And He's able to get Baumgart to trace. There's a reason he came in to this game with 48 strikeouts on the year, and that's strong stuff and really good off speed. Pitch finds the zone on the junior Jack Penny. Hammer in the zone right now ahead. 0 oh, 2. Popped up out of play. He's just coming after hitters right now. Getting ahead early in the count. It's the stuff that he's got in his arsenal. As you saw on that last at bat with Baumgart, it's hard to follow. Penny out in front of it, just barely gets the top of his bat on it. Keep himself alive. The 0-2 pitch, swung on and missed. Drop third strike. That Gerald applies the tag for back-to-back -back strikeouts here in this home half of the second. Nice sweeping curve there. Penny isn't able to get around to it. And another strikeout by Kanak. It's four on the day, and the Irish just looking for some way to break this strikeout streak. Or is now grounds it. Up and over to Hindelider, who fires across the diamond. Road series against a very potent Hokies team that was really strong. And then on top of it, Florida State's get walked off by Boston College. That one up in Chestnut Hill. Cam Larry with the big hit in the 11th. There's a lot happening within the conference this time of year. And there's some great parity as well as you start looking at even the bottom teams can sometimes make some noise against some of the big dogs. Rank Forest, Wake Forest came into this season as one of the top ranked teams in baseball and haven't had quite the start that they were hoping for, but possible that sweep or taking that series against Virginia Tech turns that around because that's a tough place to play in Blacksburg, Virginia. Oh, dude, did he go around? He did. Jerem Purify goes back to the dugout after the strikeout. It's the second for Fox. Another good off speed. That one just finds its way out of the zone. And on review of the check swing, they're going to say he went. That's another strikeout there for Fox. Talk about a Wake Forest team. Doesn't matter how you play in February. It's, can you get yourself in a bid in May? And then can you start playing when you need to start playing in your regional? Then. Super regional, and then can you start playing really your best baseball in Omaha? Gerald, the nine hole, and the catcher swings and misses. One, two, popped up to the right infield. 
Moreno calls off Hinks, who makes the grab. That was good work there by Moreno, being loud and calling for that one. It's closer to Hinks, but Moreno thought he had a better angle on it. And as we can see, once you put a ball up in the air, it goes into a bit of a spin cycle, and it's hard to track right now. Canarella fouls off pitch. Tigers get back to their leadoff man who had a grounder over to Hinks. They unassisted play at first. Canarella behind the count 0 and 2. Two in the dirt. That Spence can't corral. Both of these pitchers just coming right at hitters. Fox here with a putting up a quick 0-2 count. He's got good tempo right now, too. He's getting right in his groove. As soon as the batter hops in the batter's box, he's ready to go. One, two, swing and a miss. A drop third strike with the tag applied. I'm at the bottom of those standings, but Despite having a top versus bottom matchup in this series, it's been a couple good ones. First matchup was very close up until really the ninth inning, and yesterday obviously a one-run game. This matchup so far looking to be the makings of a pitcher duel. Something that Coach Stifler told us earlier this week when we sat down with him was, we're not playing like a 2-12 and ACC team. You can ask, he's told us straight up, you can ask any team in the conference and he's right they've been in games last weekend Austin a walk off to the NC State team we just alluded to they've been in these games it's just been trying to find that final tally to get themselves across 0-2 off the plate on Hanks One, two, fouled away. And you've seen, you know, hints of that team trying to turn it around just the series. I mean, game one, the Irish were leading up until the eighth inning. Yesterday had a chance in the ninth to make a rally, and there's a good piece of hitting by Hinks. And it will go foul, though, and bounce into the bullpen, but clock has come out. Look at how quick he is. Let's start the stopwatch here. All right, pitches in. One. Two, three. He's ready to go. He's, he's already right back on the rubber. He's ready to deliver the next one. And, and he's ready again. And that's been, it's been hard for the Irish hitters, and that's the reason why he has four strikeouts right now. It keeps him off tempo, keeps him off balance. And with the arsenal of stuff that he's throwing, as you see there, he buries a curveball, but the timing and the tempo of Canuck so far is Made it hard for the Irish hitters to adjust. Two two. Flown to right field. Mathis back at the track and makes the grab. And now Brady Gumpf into the batter's box and he made his presence known yesterday with his big pinch hit home run. That got himself back into the lineup. Gump is starting to get really full-time playing time out there in the outfield, hitting 288 on the year. Grounder, hinder ladder, and a strong throw. Gets Gump on the ground up. These are just really quick outs that Knock is getting. Irish hitters haven't had a lot of patience. And, but honestly, Canucks just throwing strikes right now. Like he's coming into the batters, coming into the mound and firing away. Spence looks at a strike. The nine hole hitter for the Irish. Popped up to left field. Taylor tracks it, positions himself under it. And through three, Canuck has seen the minimum of the, the making of a 
really strong duel between these two arms. Fox will go up against Obertop here in the fourth. As it's Obertop, Wright, and Mathis due up for the Tigers. Pitch fouled off by Obertop. The 0-2 pitch from Fox inside. Now it's ball 13, of course, as soon as we highlighted it. And Fox was able to get through. And it's a strikeout looking. Obertop not happy with it. It's back to about K's for him looking against Fox. Well, I was going to say if the Tigers might have more success the second time around against Fox, but he's keeping that up right now. And a good outside curveball. Strong frame by Spence behind the plate. Obertop didn't like it. But by the replay, it looked like it had the plate. Now Blake Wright. So Fox was able to go through this lineup the first time with really pretty much no solid contact from the Tigers. Uh, only double was off the kind of odd pop-up. And he's kept these hitters off balance still, now entering his second time through. The one-two, foul back. It's a High throw from Spence. They'll say Hinks was off the bag. And Wright will be aboard safely. And yeah, just a bad throw there by Spence. Pulls Hinks high and off the bag. Hinks was set up inside for that up third strike. And that one just Pulled him way out, and the last chance snag to try to tag him it was unsuccessful. Mathis now files it back into the netting. When Irish will put on the shift to bring Penny across second base to put three infielders to the right side. Mathis fouls it back on the Spence. And for Fox here, it's really critical, critical that he doesn't let that get to his head. You know, it's not easy to get a strikeout against a player like Blake Wright. 0-2 in the dirt. And to have it kind of go to waste and end up having Wright reaching. Definitely is hard to try to bounce back from, so we'll see if the sophomore is able to find his way through the heart of this lineup without more damage. One, two is off the plate to tie the count. Two and two. Liner just out of the reach of Penny. And Wright's on the move, and he goes into third standing, and it's runners on the corners for the Tigers. And that is hitting them where they're not at its finest right there for Mathis. The shift brought Penny over. Ball was hit right where the normal position of shortstop is, but Penny unable to reach it. And that moves right all over to third base. And now we got a first and third situation with only one out. Hindeliner shows bunt. Pushed it into the sky for a foul ball. If Clemson wants to score, it'd be the first time this series they would have scored first. It has been the Irish. Striking first in the past two games of the three-game set. Fox 
Checks back Mathis at first. We'll see what manager, head coach of the Tigers, Eric Batchik, Backage calls here, but a good chance for the Tigers to try to generate a run. Mathis at first base has good steals, has good speed, three steals on the year and four times. 0-2. Misses off the plate. The home crowd here in South Bend wanted it. It was a good spot there by Fox. Just wasn't able to get the call on that. 1-2 is swung on and missed. Another strikeout for Rory Fox. Beautiful curveball there. Has three strikeouts this half inning. Was back to right. Was able to reach on the drop third strike. Now Will Taylor. Looks at one off the plate, and Will Taylor coming into this weekend. Need to make a little noise, and he did it on Friday with a homer. Back in big four-run eighth inning for Clemson to put them ahead late on the Friday game. 1-0. Spent slides away from the crouch. Keep it in front of him. Taylor, a highly touted prospect coming into the 2024 draft. Two zero finds the black two and one. I don't know, a rare two zero count given up by Fox has really come after hitters, but ours a quick strike to put him in the strike column. Two one. Big spot here, 3-1, hitters count. And there's Fox yet again, just pumping strikes in there. Able to draw this one full. Payoff pitch to come from Fox. Runner goes, Grounder over to Bumgart. Who mishandles it. Taylor has speed. It's not going to be in time. And the Clemson Tigers get one across the plate as they lead 1-0. Baumgart always a, normally a consistent glove over there at third base. He just isn't able to wrangle that one. Hard hit ground ball and the throw across. Top third strike to right. Allowed him to score and allows the Tigers take a lead here in the fourth. When you're playing the number two team in the country, it's hard to spot them a run off errors. It's a gapper. That should easily score Mathis. There's Sen Taylor around third. The throw home won't be in time as Will Taylor comes in sliding, and it's a big double for Naraki. That's really the first time all day that Fox has been hit hard. Naraki drives that one on a line into the gap. Taylor comes a long way around to score, and it looked like they had a good chance of getting him out at home as the throw in was just a bit too far in front of the plate, and Spence was unable to put a tag on. And in an inning that really should be over with Fox's three strikeouts, the Tigers strike. Purify. Looks at a strike. 
And all this happening here with two outs. Get Taylor aboard with the error to Bumgar. And then it's a huge double for Naraki as he slides back in safely on the check back. One one into foul territory. Hinks will give it a look, running all the way to the wall, will fall out of play. Good effort on the run over there by Hinks. And really just a, a tough inning for the Irish. All three runs unearned. The one, two. Grounder back up the middle. Penny spins for it and cannot get to first in time. Jaron Purify with some speed out of the box. Runners on the corners for the Tigers here with two outs. Yep, and he legs out that infield single, and it was a smooth play over there up the middle by Penny, honestly. He went a long way and was able to make the snag and make a throw over, but Purify just with good speed. Bang, bang play, and the runner got it. So it's really going from bat coming down harder. Tattooed to left field. Glancy can only look at it. It's a shot for Jacob Jarrell. And the fourth inning is all Tigers. Wow. An absolute tattooed fastball there from Gerald. And he sent that one way out of here. Staples that one, and it was clear off the bat. That three-run bomb opens this ball game up in a game that started off as a pitcher duel, and the Tigers now find themselves with a sixth spot. They go back to Cam Canarella. Be the ninth batter to see the plate here in the top of the fourth. 1-0. It's flown to left field and will go foul. That's, that's just a tough one for Fox. You know, he has to deal with a couple of miscues on defense and still try to make his pitches. And it only takes one to hit a wrong spot. And suddenly this ball game is wide open. One, two, chopped to Moreno. Gloves it and gets the out at first. It's not. It definitely doesn't feel great when you get hit, hit there. But it puts on the leadoff man now and has a duck on the pond now for Glancy. A one. On the appeal to Jose Asteris, we'll say Glancy went around. He's behind in the count, 0-2. Jake Botek behind home plate. Adam Dowdy at second base, and Travis Carlson at third base round out the ACC umpire and crew here today on this Sunday. Grounder over to Purify, was playing close to second base, and his glove can't scoop it up. And now two aboard here with nobody away. Off the bat, that looked like trouble. Glancy just pretty much hit it off the end of the bat almost on the top of the, the knob and <laughs> unable to run in and make a play on it. But even if he fields it cleanly, he has to make a good throw over to get Glancy at that point on the slow roller. So Purify isn't able to wrangle it. And suddenly that puts two men on now here for the three hitter Moreno. Canuck dealing with the first time. Arnos has been on the base pass here today. It's a healthy swing and miss from Moreno. Coming into this fourth. 
And I could see the minimum. Another hit batter, and this one gets Moreno, who's shaken up. And now base is loaded. And that's another stinger, and you could see Moreno grimacing there, is stretching his arm out as he's running down to first base. She came inside and hit him Clemson rally. Could be looking at a similar spot here for the Irish. Oh one. one Baumgart out in front of it. Grounded foul by Notre Dame dugout. For the Irish, if you want a chance to try to come back in this matchup, Jason Canuck right now with a big blast would go a long way towards that. Swing and a miss with the tag applied, and that will be the strikeout and a big response from Canuck. Still not out of the worry zone yet. Well, he gathers himself and delivers a good pitch right there. Gets Baumgart to chase. For strikeout number four on the outing. Now Jack Penny, what can he do with the bases loaded? Fly ball, left field. Taylor will give it a look to his right side. Positioning himself on the foul line. The throw home with the sliding. Williams gets the Irish on the board. And that was and Moreno tag up and move 90 extra feet. That was a closer play than I thought it was going to be right off the bat. It was a great throw out of left field from Taylor. He had time to settle under that, and once he did, he unleashed an absolute howitzer and actually got there about the same time that Williams did, but the late bounce bounced high, and so Jarrett wasn't able to bring it down. Canuck is ready to go. He wants to get the pitch into the zone about as quick as possible. He's waiting on everybody else to get ready for him, not the other way around. Well, he's about to start dealing, and the uh, walk-up song hasn't even ended. <laughs> pitch in for a strike. Heads up play also by Glancy. And Moreno being able to move over and tag up from that long throw over and the tag up by Williams. He's not even getting to the single digits here on the pitch clock. In the stadium, he's consistently pitching. As soon as it gets to 10. Let's see. I might have broadcasters jinxed it. Oh, yeah, I did. 2-1. In for strike. Well, that's a sign of trust. And your catcher, too, because he's looking in for the call. He's not doing too much shaking off, just taking the call, taking the ball, and hucking it. Deuce is wild. Swing and a miss. Aiden Canuck works out of the bases loaded. Over top. Pops one up. Could be trouble. Moreno. Will be called off by Hinks, who makes the grab. Overtop was on the treadmill there. Already found himself over to second base. You look at the wind here. It is playing a factor. We have seen it between the Gumpf ball out in right field to that pop up right there. Once the ball gets high enough, it is swirling around. And the players are having a difficult time trying to figure out where it's going to end up. And it was a tough one there, especially because you had Marino shifted over on the opposite side of second base. So he's trying to come over a long way. Thankfully, Hinks was able to settle under it, but over top with a really smart play, making sure he got his way all the way over to second in case that ball ended up falling. Right is nudged off the plate. And for Fox, working his way through the middle of this Tiger lineup again, trying to really just shake off last inning. Honestly, really only had one bad pitch in all of last inning. That resulted in the three-run blast. 1-1. One, one. 
is lined in dropping into shallow left. Wright's gonna make a hard turn around first, but quickly will return to the first base bag. And the hot bats continue here for the Tigers. Hit number six on the day for the Tigers. Now Mathis will look at a strike. Alden Mathis had a single back in that fourth inning. Switch out the balls here again as rain starts to lighten up a little bit. A one runner thought about going. It's a hand run that's executed perfectly. It's a single from Mathis. That gets right all the way to third, and now runners are back on the corners for the Clemson Tigers. <laughs> Hard hit ball on the ground, gets past the infield. And there's Taylor busting it around the bases. Or rather, right, busting it around the bases, and he finds his way over to third, so that's going to set up another first and third situation. And It'll bring Spence out to have a conversation with Rory Fox here. This Tigers team is just, the fundamentals are all there. Benick. Fundamentals are all there, and that's why that they're sitting at number two in the country right now. Bennett Flynn's starting to get warm in the Irish bullpen here. After the conference on the bump. We'll check back. Mathis to first. Nothing or nothing pitch to Hindelider is a ball that holds on his swing. In the ladder today, a double back in the second. In the ladder, the transfer from Davidson. Two out. Grounded out of the reach of Bumgarner. It's a fair ball. Wright will come in to score. Mathis will be wheeled around third. The throw won't be in time. It's another beautiful hit from this Clemson battery. Jacob Hindelider finds himself at second. Another ground ball on that one just Gets down the line in a hurry. Baumgart isn't able to dive and knock it down. Brings in two to score for the Tigers. And here comes another talk out with Fox, but here you see some celebration with Hindelider at second. Look at a pitch low. It was Will Taylor reaching on the error by Baumgart that really got the first run across in the fourth. For Clemson, runner goes. Throw is high and coming in with the stolen base is Jacob Hindelider as he steals third. That's an aggressive steal right there in this spot in the game, but He's able to get there with plenty of time. Throw was a bit late and a little high, and so the Irish are going to bring the infield in here with only one out. 
Pitch gets away from Spence. Able to keep himself over it. Pinderlider at bay at third. Taylor ahead of the count, 3-0. Pitch from Flynn. He's in the dirt. And runners on the corners. So Taylor gets on and hasn't quite had the year he was hoping for last year. At 362. Five home runs as a full-time starter. He was able to get a walk there. And this Clemson Tiger offense has absolutely come alive after the first time around. Went pretty quickly down on their first time facing Fox, but were able to figure it out a little bit, and now they're cooking. Got to give it up for our graphics operator, Johnny McDermott, doing some great work out there for us, looking at the stat pages as well as crafting up some great graphics to tell the story of this one unfolding in front of us. Pitches low as Flynn has come in and hasn't been able to find the zone. Now you have the rain kind of continuing in the background too. So it remains to be seen how that will affect the rest of this matchup. 2-0, bunch shown. Another pitch that does not find the zone. Flynn just trying to find anything on the black bunt is shown in its back-to-back -back walks since coming in. And now base is loaded with only one retired. And that's eight straight balls down for Flynn since coming in, so has to try to ratchet it down here and Find a way to get a strike. Base is loaded and only one out. But shown, pulls back, and it's another ball. Jerem Purify. As this will force a mound meeting. But the base is loaded and only one retired. Here in this fifth inning, Bunt shown again, pulled back. Another ball. Pitch low again. Last two counts against Taylor and Nockney. Not even down the strike zone. And there it is. finally, a strike finds the zone. Always got to start with one. 3 1. Nowhere to put Purify. Another battle back strike here. A full count now on the second baseman. Payoff pitch. Lined into center field. Williams makes the grab. Hinderleiter comes in sliding, and it's another run for Clemson. It's snag out in the outfield by Williams as he's able to come in and take that one, but the Tigers at another as Purify hits that one hard and it's enough to get the runner in. Good throw by Williams, but Inderlier was able to slide in ahead of it. So the Tigers keep tacking on. As 
another meeting on the mound here. The Irish are going to really need to rely on him to get out of this jam. Darrell looks at a strike as Hartman pitched an inning and a third back on Friday. Gave up one earned run in that outing. Each of the last two years, he was named one of the Stopper of the Year award watch list. That's the start of the year, so has a pedigree of success out of the bullpen. The one two is thought about, but checked up. Two two. Held on, it'll appeal down. So he did not go around, and it's a full count. Runners will be going here with two outs. Payoff pitch in for a strike. Nate Hardman comes in and done. One of the Hinks, Gumpf, and Spence do up. Grounder right back to Kanak, who underhands it over to first. One away. That's some good glove work there on the mound from Kanak. It's a hard hit ground ball by Hinks right back at him. And he was just able to stick his glove out there and make an easy flip over to first. And the poise from this freshman on the bump, he keeps showing and he's just ready to, to fire every time. Gumpf grounded to Hinderleiter back in the third. Back to him again. Off the hop, and two away. Two quick, two quick outs here for Kanak. As the Irish just trying to look to generate something. Now Joey Spence will have Wright come in to play off the third base foul line. Back-to-back -back balls here. The junior Spence has really forced his way into the lineup with strong hitting on the year. Slugging over 600 right now. Part of a kind of a glut of catchers that the Irish are working with right now between Spence, Lynn Wendell, and Penny, or Tinney. 2-1, flown into the gap. Canarella is able to track it down and get hole. Up and down this lineup, this Clemson Tigers team has been dangerous. Talk about someone to try and to get going today is Cam Canarella. 0 for 3 so far. Can't be said for a lot of batters today. They found to make an impact so far today, but Edolf Mann, who made his impact known yesterday in his fifth inning homer. It's been quiet as he finds himself Line of the count, 0 and 2. Pitch is low from Hardman. Pitch off the plate. Hardman was able to come in last inning and finally stop the onslaught of runs from the Tigers. And, and Hardman gets Canarella looking. 
one retired here in the six. He had a bit of a jog off the mound after that. He was, he was amped up. Good spot on the outside. Strong frame there from Spence. And they got the call. Over top. Chops one fell. Over top, another guy today. That coming into today, some big storyline on his weekend series, but finds himself 0 for 3. Fox, Flynn, and Hardman so far have dealt with one and two hole batters of this potent lineup well. As you mentioned, only one hit from the top three members of this lineup, so it's really been contributions from the middle and back of this Clemson lineup that's driven them to an onslaught of nine runs today. 3-1 into the zone for strike to load it full. Launched a mile into left field, and it's out of here. Off the netting and left. How about that for a statement for Jimmy Obertop, who makes his presence felt, and it's another run for the Tigers. Just as we talk about not having anything from Obertop this game, he comes out and absolutely launches a ball, deposits that into the net out there in left field. And the Tigers keep rolling. Knew it off the bat. And he got pretty much all of that one. Pop up into foul territory. Spence is called off by Baumgart, who gets the grab. So Obertop deposits his seventh home run on the year. And the Tigers move to double digits. And the first two games of this series, the Tiger offense was a bit stymied through most of the games. You saw in game one, they really didn't have a lot of their offense until late in the matchup. And yesterday only had three runs. But today it started with a couple unfortunate errors by the Irish, and they've been able to tack on since. You got to give credit to Irish pitching staff that started both contests on Friday and Saturday. Matt Bedford went four and two thirds, only give, giving up two hits before he came out, and Riddell was spectacular. Spivey came in after him yesterday and also pitched in four strong innings. And Fox had a strong start to his start today. And just through a couple of miscues, but the defense behind him, things just sort of unraveled from there. One, two with the wind gusting. Hard grounder, Moreno takes to the gut. And Hinks today, they lead by nine and you look at it, six runs in the fourth inning, and then a three-run homer from Gerald that just was a no-doubter. And then you go back just a half inning ago, Obertop with a no-doubter himself. It's been offense galore for Clemson. And you could pretty much summarize that summary in one sentence, and that's the Tigers are a good ball club. And they've shown that <laughs> in pretty much every fashion today, taking advantage of bad miscues by the Irish, timely hitting that with that big bomb from Gerald that drove in three runs, and really strong pitching. Canuck has just been dealing on the mound. Five innings, six strikeouts, only one run, it was unearned. 
And a zero in the hit column so far for the Irish. As Williams fouls back. He's only at there. 53 pitches, too. So definitely has more gas in the tank. It does Canuck. Williams fouls off another one. Two two pitch into the gap in right center field. And Mathis calls off Canarella to make the grab. And now David Glancy. The Irish now in their third time around the lineup trying to get another look at Canuck and try to change what's really been the dominance. He's had on the bump all day. And we keep talking about his approach, just firing strikes, and there he does yet again. Pop up into shallow center field. Hinderliner has the grab to a right. Look at that lettuce. Let it flow. He loses his hat on the run there. And it's a good head of hair right there. I don't know. You got some, you got some good hair too, Caesar. I used to have hair that long. I, I one point or another, I had hair all the way down to the, the shoulders. But uh, whoa, that in your basketball, that was back in the baseball playing days. Way way back then. <laughs> Pitch in for strike on Moreno. Come on, you got to have a little bit of flow. ZL one swung on and missed. Well, that's just a. It, it looks great too when on a play like that from Hinderlier where. He's got to make it over the shoulder catch on a pop fly. And loses the hat. Yeah. <laughs> 0 2 pitch. Upstairs off the glove of Gerald. Whoopsie. Nuck just lets that one go a little too high. But yet another pitcher's count here. He's kept this Irish offense off balance. 1 2 from Canuck. Swung on and missed. An absolute deal from Aiden Con Engineering. Now comes here for his graduate degree at Notre Dame. That's a, that's a nice resume right there. Yeah, that's some pretty good stuff. And you're athletic too, like, whew. Guy's got it all working for him. And I'll know yet again, a Another good head of hair here. Yeah. Got it. The, the, the hair is on full display here. With the Hinderlier and McDonough matchup. McDonough can't find the zone. She is the count three balls to none. Pitch that finds the black. Three and one now. Five pitch walk for Hinderliner. Gets the opening man here of the seventh aboard for Clemson. Hinderlier reaches base for his third time of the outing. Had two doubles before, two RBIs on the second one. Irish have a pair of Ivy League educated right-handed relief pitchers in McDonough and Will Jacobson. Will Jacobson giving his, getting his degree from Harvard. McDonough, as mentioned, from Brown. Notre Dame in an interesting spot with their high academic rigor of going to the transfer portal as typically have to go get grad students. I think the Ivies can fly, though, and you're able to give it into Notre Dame a little easier knowing that their pedigree is such a strong academic conference at school as swinging a miss on the fastball. 
to Taylor. Well, it's a challenge for all the members of this team to have to balance, you know, academics and the full-time requirements of playing baseball every day, especially at an institution like Notre Dame. But, uh, yeah, I think if you're coming from an Ivy League school, you'll, uh, you'll be able to fit in just fine. One, two, Taylor lifts one to left field. Glancy off to his left side, makes the out. And this is the ACC right now in the midseason D1 baseball field of 64. There's a very real possibility the Atlantic Coast <laughs> Conference gets 10 teams into the tournament. You look at it here. You have Clemson and North Carolina that feel like they're pretty much locked in to a one spot right now, barring any big changes down the stretch. Florida State, though, getting walked off yesterday, has a little bit more of a question mark on their one seed potential, but the conference is in strong footing this year. Pop up into foul territory. Hinks onto the warning track and makes the grab. Two retired. It's a long run over there, but he was able to make a good snag and hit the second out. But as you mentioned, a lot of talent in the ACC right now. You got seven teams with 20 plus wins already at this point in the season. And we already talked about Wake Forest earlier. Came in with the championship aspirations and it hasn't exactly gone as they have hoped, but all it takes is just got to get out at the right time and make a run into the tournament. Donna checks back. First pitch to come to Purify. Finds zone for a strike. Thought about it there. Purify the freshman. Came into the season, 49th ranked freshman in the nation. By perfect game. It'll be a foul ball just down the line. Just couldn't stay fair. There's a close play there too. Just missed hitting the bag. Would have likely been extra bases there for Purify. O2. Upstairs and away. Loses count to one and two. Second, but retreating is Hinderleiter. And now two aboard here with two outs. It's a right back up the middle. Not sure how McDonough managed to miss that one. That one was, or how it managed to miss hitting him rather, because that one was hit right on the head as he was able to jump over it. Jarrell looks at a strike. And this is when the Tigers have done damage today, and that's been with two outs. 
Five of the runs in the fourth came with two outs, and this is a blooper that will be fair. Just over the head of Hinks. Coming to score will be Hindelider. Purify is held at third, and it's Jacob Gerald with a two-out single that brings in another one. Got jammed on that one and went inside out swing. Just over the head of Hinks over there at first and lands about less than a foot fair. That'll tack in another run for the Tigers. And Gerald with his fourth RBI of the outing. Pinch hitter for the Tigers in Jack Creighton. Walks out a ball away. Subs in for Cam Canarella, the leadoff man. Spot like this, a big for the Tigers. Just a chance to get a younger bat in there. Brian, the sophomore, financial management major. It's a 1 1 count that he swings through. Mom Courtney played basketball at Oakland. Now the one, two, goes foul and out of play. Spence will give it a look, but goes off the clubhouse of the Tigers. One, two upstairs. Sun's starting to peek through here a little bit after rain that fell. Earlier in this contest, 2-2. Two -two. It's flown to Williams in center, who comes in with the slow jog to make the grab. It's another one for Clemson as they lead by 10. It's as he maybe knows the pressure that's mounting here as a little bit of a sunglass change from the dugout for Taylor to go out into left field with. And Canucks got to be frustrated. He wanted to go the entire game without having to step off the rubber, but that streak will have to end. But Going for history right now is Canuck as the freshman has been a star today. Seven strikeouts and one run unearned. No walks. He had two hits ba hit batsmen earlier. 0-2, slow roller. Right, fields it beautifully in time. One retired. And this is what he's dealing with here. He needs two more outs. And then it'll be a run rule in effect here. And that's the Tigers are leading by 10 here. Through seven and a third. All you need in ACC conference play is 10 after seven. And the offensive explosion by the Tigers have put them in in that position right now. The 0-1. It's pulled foul. And now, Kanak again with an 0-2. Chopper. Over to Obertop, and it rolls foul. And now it'll be the question. 
How do you oh, score that? Oh, how do you score? Because <laughs> that you could potentially that? preserve the no-hitter. I think that's an error. I, I, I got to be honest. I think that's an error. I think it was nearly an infield single. He was close to lugging it out, but the tough throw by Wright trying to flick it over to and now going over to cover it. Scoreboard officially changed in venue. It'll be ruled as an error. The no-hitter is preserved here for Canuck. Still going at history for the Tigers. As a dropper, that'll get oh. down, and there's the no-hitter that is broken for the Irish. What a performance from Aiden Canuck today. As it's a little blooper from Tito Flores. And all it took was, as you mentioned, just a blooper. Got it off the end of the bat and just in there in no man's land. And we're going to have a talk over at the mound now to try to talk through things through. Knock his, and his tempo on the bump has been persistent and quick. Liner through the gap between Purify and Obertop. Penny is wheeled around third and coming in sliding is the junior. And Notre Dame picks up a run. So an RBI single there for Connor Hinks as he drills one into the outfield. And suddenly for Kanak, it seems like you, you let go of one and sometimes it could kind of steamroll into more. Now Gump looks at a ball. Another look at that is Hinks hammers that one. One hops into the outfield. And in comes a run. So the Irish put off the run rule for the seventh by tallying one at the plate. And now they're going to look to keep this rally up with Gump. 1-1 one, one is skied foul. And he got a lot of that one. Straighten that one out a little bit, and it's hitting the flagpoles out there in left field. One, two. So we're going to miss as Gump goes back to the dugout after the strikeout. Now two retired here in the bottom of the seventh. High fastball, Gump chases. Another good spot from Canuck, and that's his eighth of the outing, eighth strikeout. Been impressive today from Aiden Canuck. He's working a no hitter all the way here. Bottom of the seventh. Spence out in front of it. Nodding the count at one and one. Here comes the sun now on this Sunday afternoon. Other swing and a miss. One and two. I thought you were going to give me a rendition of the Beatles there, Caesar. <laughs> <Do, do, do. laughs> the one two from Canuck. Song on him missed. We're still playing here in South Bend as the Tigers lead 11 to 2. Six walks. And the Irish are going to look to him to extend this yet another inning. They've been relying. On their grad transfer relief pitchers so far today. Also defensive change for the Irish as they bring in DeMarco to third base for Baumgart. Pitch inside. 
to Nathan Hall, the pinch hitter. Two zero is in for strike. Nathan Hall, comms major at Clemson. Two two is away to load the count full. Payoff pitch, lined off the hop, fielding it is Moreno. Gets it to Hanks in time. We got there. Easy fielding play for Moreno at second. Jacobson has. A bit of accolades from his time at Harvard was second team all <laughs> Ivy last year. Another pinch hitter here for the Tigers. They'll bring in Tristan McClady, the freshman, to pinch it. Looks at a pitch. In the dirt, Claddy making his 11th appearance in a game. And looking to try and take advantage of the opportunity. Jacobson behind in the count. Pitch finds the zone. Popped up and out of play. We'll do it again full. Weather today is very on brand for a South Bend spring. <laughs> Had the rain and the clouds, and now a mix of sunshine. As it'll be a walk here for McClady. <laughs> Inside pitch there, and Jacobson was. Not happy with himself for missing on that one. And now, Mathis into the box. Mathis today, two singles, back in the electrifying fourth and fifth for the Clemson Tigers. Myers playing on the ship for him. Bringing Penny to the right side. And now with the 0-2, they'll bring Penny back over. Pitch off the plate. And Mathis holds on. This swings and misses. Jacobson with the K. Two retired. Bounces back from the walk to get the strikeout. <laughs> Swing and a miss. And the second out of the inning.
and a liner. Swings at the first pitch he sees. And a liner's at a great weekend thus far. It was three for five on Friday, one for four yesterday, and putting together a stellar day today. Two for three with a double and a single. The 0-2 from Jacobson is fouled back into the netting. And in their ladder, as you've mentioned, as had a strong day as a plate today. OPS over a thousand on the year. In the ladder as a blooper in the right field that drops out of the reach of Moreno. Right. Quickly moving is McClatty. Over to third, and now runners on the corners with two away. Just enough to get over the glove of Marina out there in right field. He put on a good chase, but couldn't find it. In the lighter with his third hit of the afternoon. And that'll put up another first and third here. Now with two outs. Bring on another pinch hit or two for Leighton Lackey. It's now Irish pitching coach, Key. The pinch hitter. Steps into the box, a sophomore. From Evans, Georgia. Nothing and nothing pitch is in for strike. Lackey last year was consistently a pinch runner for this team. Tough spot for here for Lynch to come in on. It's been relied upon over the last few years. The bigger arm in the bullpen for the Irish. 1-1 one, one, finds the zone here. Let's try and strand McClatty at third. The 1-2, grounder over to DeMarco, who throws the rainbow to Hinks. Nancy and Moreno, three bats that, as Glancy, as Williams gets knocked to the ground, and Glancy is quick to run over. And they're not taking a look at him over at home plate. A scary sight as that one pretty much hit him nearly on the collarbone almost. Pushing away Coach Stifler and he'll take his base proudly. Second hit by pitch today. That is just not a fun place to get hit by a pitch there. I mean, he's trying to generate some kind of offense and put down a bunt. And Ball just came inside, and he's a trooper for making his way down to first base, because that's a tough one. Not a place you're used to getting hit, either. Now Glancy, quick to look after his teammate, steps into the box now. Spent two years at Furman before coming over to Clemson before the 2020-2021 season. Oh, 
Hughes behind. 2-0 count. And for strike on St. John's transfer. Hughes has had some good numbers last year. 1.56 ERA in 17 innings. Well, hit that will drop in front of Canarilla. And now two aboard for the Irish starting to string two on base together. <laughs> Just able to muscle it out there to center field. Lancy gets on. That's going to set up Moreno with two men on and no out. Moreno lifts this one, and it gets down by Canarilla. They'll send Williams in to throw home, not going to be in time. It's a big double for Mesteron Moreno. Smooth swing, and he hits that one hard. Looked like there might have been a chance for him to catch up to it out there in center field, but Meanwhile, on the base pass, Glancy was pretty much on Williams' heels, running to third. Kind of forced Williams to have to pick up the speed and hit the boosters as he was able to slide into home. And the Irish tally their third run of the outing. Pop up into shallow right center. Purify is called off by Hindelider, who makes the grab. That's a long run over there from Hindelier. And he takes full command out there in the outfield. Or running out there. Calling off Purify. The kind of leadership you want to see from your senior shortstop. Now Jack Penny had the sack fly Back of the fourth to bring in Williams. To get the Irish on the board for the first time today. Penny lifts one foul by the parking lot here at Frank X Stadium. Cesar Sanchez, Jacob Irons, so happy to have you with us here for the series finale between Clemson and Notre Dame on this Sunday as the appeal down to Travis Carlson will say Penny went around to move the count to one and two. Penny hasn't quite had the year he's hoped for at the plate, but always brings a fantastic glove over there at shortstop, making the transition over from third base over the past few years. The 2 2 to Penny is inside, three and two. And Coach Stifler talked about Jack Penny being an elite squash player in high school and how it allows his defense to be able to profit from it because he has to read hops so well and especially on a turf field like they have here in South Bend. Hops are a large part of the infield. The payoff pitch to Penny pushes him off the plate and now base is loaded. And that's a really good walk there worked by Penny back from being down on the count and found his way on base. Irish showing a little bit of fight here in this bottom of the eighth. Now Tito Flores had a single in the seventh to bring in Penny. 
keep this game playing. Flores has a pedigree of success from coming over from Michigan. Hasn't quite had the year he was hoping for either. Played under that coach Eric Backage back when Backage was at Michigan before coming over to Clemson. 1 0 is held on. Gerald will make the saunter out to the mound. Talk with his pitcher. And Hughes. Ripped to left field. Oh, off the glove. Olaki. Glancy will be in. The William Moreno. On a changing of the tides here for the Irish. Get your rally caps on. And a hard hit ball by Flores. Out in left field. And Lackey just... Whiffs on that one, bounces out of the glove. Two runs come in to score. And the Irish have the making of a rally going right now. Three runs so far in the inning. What a turn of events here as Eric Backich. Hanks fouls it off and also make a defensive change as Bassetta comes in for Lackey in left field. After the errant play that is ruled a double for Tito Flores. Hanks fouls it back. Now, Garris is ahead on Hinks. Hinks hold on a fastball up and away. Two pitch. Skied in foul territory is. It goes foul. It's putting up a battle here. Well, Hanks has really come on the scene this year and been a strong bat in the Irish for in the lineup. Hanks. Gets all of it to right field as Hall positions himself under it, but tagging is Moreno. It's now four runs here in the bottom of the eighth for the Irish. They keep tagging on more, and Hanks with his second RBI of the day. And off the bat, honestly, it was a hard hit ball, and it could have been brought down a little bit by the wind, honestly, because. He got a lot of it off the bat. Flores moving on sacrifice as well and brings up Brady Gumpf. Who yesterday, when the Irish needed something, he responded with solo homer in the bottom of the ninth. Moved the score three to one to three to two as it would finalize a batter later. So the Irish now in this Sunday matchup with more runs than they 
put up in the first two games. Finding some offense late. One, two, upstairs. Now two and two. Come fouls it off, we'll do it again. Garrish's major is listed on the Tigers website as being Parks, Recreation, and Tourism Management. Two two popped up into foul territory. McClady's going to give it a look along with Gerald, but it goes by our camera operator on the third base dugout. Getting some nice airtime there for all of our hardworking. Crew here in South Bend bringing you this game on this Sunday afternoon. The 2 2. Looped into foul territory. Gerald loses his mask and grabs this ball out of the air through a Louisville team. That Louisville team has started to get themselves right here down the stretch. New wing on the bump for the Irish is. The junior Sammy Cooper, or senior rather, Sammy Cooper. Four innings of work so far on the year. 4.5 year, right? There you see a look at his numbers. He's walk free so far. Tapper by Cooper Blauser. Pinch hitter here for Nolan Araki. Pitch just off the plate from Cooper. Payoff pitch, work him up. Wowser thought it was ball four and flipped the bat, but it's a strikeout for Cooper. And that one had the plate. Home plate umpire Jake Bodek, Bodek liked it. And Cooper gets his first strikeout of the outing. Purify. Looks at a ball low. Purify today. Two singles and a sacrifice. He swings through. off Williams and Gump then makes the grab for the second out. He takes command out there and settles under that one. Two quick outs now for Cooper in this top of the ninth. And now Gerald, 
the nine hole hitter today. Thought about it, but nonetheless, it's called a strike. Another swing and a miss. This time for Gerald. O2 pitch, got him looking. Sammy Cooper comes. Her name needs five. Try and push to extras. Yeah, you mentioned it. This game has really gone through multiple cycles. You're talking about first three frames are scoreless. Kanak coming in with seven strong, nine strikeouts for the Tigers. Nearly wrapping up a no hitter at that point before being denied of that in the seventh. And an offensive explosion back in the fourth and fifth from the Tigers. With 11 runs scored for them today. 0-2, Spence turns on it on a dime and Crane will step on first. One down. Now if you're the Irish, turns over your lineup. <laughs> Your leadoff man. Alstead, a junior, transferred over from Wolford the past two years. Had a 2.69 ERA and 83 innings last year. Now the 1 0. This is off the plate. Over the count to Tuna. Lined into right field, laying out for, or thought about laying out for it was Hall, who had the check back on it. And now a lead, lead off batter in the Irish lineup is aboard. And that one looked like it was going to be a routine pop five, but some wind issues out there in the outfield. We've talked about that all day being a problem, and there was another one that you see that ball getting knocked down off the bat of Williams. So he's going to reach, and the Irish stay alive. I'm Glancy. Lines one, out of the reach of the diving Hindelider. And now two on for the Irish here as they try and work some ninth magic. <laughs> this, pit, this point, if you're Notre Dame, you just have to be the guy to get it to the next person. Got to keep turning over the lineup. Esteban Moreno. Sees a strike. And we had a double back in the eighth. Bring in Williams. Popped up into foul territory and it will land right in the Clemson dugout. Tigers were fleeing out of the area. O2 pitch to Moreno. His foul tip. Moreno had a double an inning ago. Brought in an RBI and came around to score. The 2 is fouled away. 
Big gusts of wind here in South Bend. The 0-2 again to Moreno. Misses off the plate. Close, close spot there. And home plate umpire Dick Botek just didn't see it that way. And so Moreno stays alive. One, two. It's tattooed to left field. It's out of here. The Irish have come back firing on the past two innings, and it's a homer for Esteban Moreno. Who would have thought of this? The Fighting Irish are not quitting on this one as Moreno launches that one. Way over the scoreboard and out over the left field fence. And they're right back in this one. Going into the bottom of the seventh, it was a no hitter being pitched by Aiden Canuck. Irish respond for one, eliminating the mercy. They then get four in the eighth, and now here in the bottom of the ninth, have three runs crossing home plate off the homer from Moreno. And now they'll go to the pinch hitter, DM Jefferson. So Jefferson's gonna come in to give him another look at the plate. And what a bomb by Moreno. Jefferson fouls it over the press box. and looks at a ball off the plate. Talk about the fight in this Notre Dame team. Like we talked on, had a no hitter against them going to the bottom of the seventh and now responded for eight runs in this back third of the game. Two on pitch. In for strike on Jefferson. Shift on, hinder ladder to the right side. Now a full count. I'm working a good at bat here, just trying to scrap by. Payoff pitch. Chop foul. Irish dugout has gotten back into this matchup, motivated by the blast by Moreno. They're cheering Jefferson on. Jefferson works the walk and he's pumped. Irish keep the train moving and now the tying run stands in the box. And so that's gonna put it on Jack Benny. And what a turnaround in this game over the last three innings here in South Bend. Penny fouls one out of play. And Penny Day. Zach Froy's flying the fourth to get the first run for the Irish. Reach on an error and on the seventh and came around to score. Worked to walk back in the eighth.
pitch upstairs. is fouled away by Jack Penny, the junior. Clemson looking for two more outs to try and get on the bus and get the series sweep. Notre Dame's had second thoughts about that. 2-2. Two -two. This is inside. Close, close pitch there. And you could see Jarrell's turning around and talking to home plate umpire Jake Botek and seeing his displeasure with that call. That one was tight. Payoff pitch is launched foul. Pitch to come. Pitch inside, it's another walk. The go ahead. Chef found a way and now sit here with the go ahead run at the plate. Tito Flores, the batter. Drills one through the gap between Hindeliner and McClatty. They'll wheel in Jefferson. He'll come in standing. It's one run for the Irish. And they're down by one. Picking up another one here in the ninth. The hip parade keeps up. Flores with his second or third of the game, rather. And Jefferson speeds around the base bats and comes around to score. And the Irish stay in business. Still only one out. Four runs scored in this inning. Eight runs over the last two. That's going to bring up Hinks. He's already got two RBIs on the outing. Casey Komet will come into pinch run at first base. Hinks will swing around on it. Hinks. Fouls one up and out of play. He's behind in the count, 0-2. Oh in a game where the Tigers were rolling, the Irish have flipped it on its head. O2 oh, in the dirt. Gerald keeps it in front of him. Seemingly on their way to a clean sweep of the series and the Irish of the last two innings said not so fast. One, two, swing and a miss. A big strikeout for Nick Clayton and the Clemson Tigers. They're one out away from closing this up. Hinks just chases on that one. Good. Off speed pitch from Clayton, dips out of the zone. And he's able to get the second out. Brady Gump, the ninth batter to appear here in the home half of the ninth as Gump fouls it back into the netting. And last time he was in the ninth, he found himself with a home run yesterday to make the game 3-2. The late rally from the Irish would fall short, but here he is again with the game on the line. 0-1. Inside. 1-1. One one. You have to imagine with the speed of Penny on second, any ball to the outfield, he's at least going to be sent home. Let's try to tie this one up. 1-1, one, one, below the knees, 2-1 now. 
Gomf with a good take there. Two one. Gump fouls it away. Deuces all around here now. Two and two, two outs. Two men on. Huge pitch to come from Clayton. Another fouled off pitch from Gumpf. Both dugouts getting into this one. This is as intense as you could get here on a Sunday afternoon. Who wins the battle, Clayton or Gumpf? The 2-2 pitch. Gets through the legs, going through Gerald's leg, and it rolls, they're gonna send in Penny, sliding home, the comeback for the ages. We're tied at 11. Wow! Oh. Payoff pitch to Gump is fouled away, and now commit on third means all the difference. The winning run, 90 feet from home for the Irish. In a game that has had everything, a no-hitter to the seventh. And now, what has been 10 runs for the Irish put up over the past three innings. Now has Notre Dame with a chance to walk it off. The 3-2 pitch is popped up in the infield. Coming in for it will be McClady. Take us extras, let's go, more baseball. <laughs> it is. Steps into the box for Clemson. He turns on one quickly that goes foul. One pitch is upstairs, one and one. Cooper back out for another inning of work here for the Irish. All one foul back, one and two. Cooper with another strikeout, his third of his outing. Four up, four down so far for Cooper. As you see that one, a good off-speed pitch, dipped out of the zone, got the chase. And he keeps rolling. Now Clemson changed up their lineup a lot, getting in a lot of younger players back when they had a big lead. And so all three of their top three in the lineup are out with players now. Grounder quickly over to Moreno, who fields to first to retire. So that'll bring up McClady as Cooper has made quick work of the Tigers. Getting two fast outs. McClady looks at a ball low. 1 0. Pitches upstairs. 
3 0 on McClady. Pitch that finds the zone. off the plate, and McClady works the walk. Bringing up Alden Mathis, cleanup hitter. So McClady only had 10 at-bats on the year, and he's able to work a big walk, and that sets up Mathis. It's two for five on the outing. Pitch off the plate. Cooper will check back that Claddy's able to get back in there safely. going it's a healthy hack for Mathis that doesn't make contact one and one Mathis last time up in the eighth struck out runner goes throw down from Spence not gonna be in time now McClady in scoring position. And with two outs, Claddy's on the move with everything. Two on pitch, runs inside. zone full count in this game that has seen pretty much everything and has seen a lot of pitchers come in and out Cooper has been pretty consistent on finding the zone so far Cooper pushes that one too far inside on Mathis our runners at first and second with back-to-back -back walks I are starting to get some arms moving and David Lally is up and at him and starting to get warm. Now Spence will come out to have a conversation. Into the batter's box. Pitch upstairs in the attic. Four ball and in a ladder today has been so spectacular. Has met the moment. Did he meet it again? Gumpf is underneath it and makes a grab. Lally comes in and gets the out. He Spence. And in a game where the Irish were nearly no hit, going into the bottom of the seventh inning, they now have a chance to walk this off. A one, and Spence lines it foul. O 
0-2. Spence flies it over the press box here at Frank X Stadium. Spence today, 0 for 4. The grounder over Crichton. Pitch in the dirt. On the catcher, Spence. One, two. Spence lifts it to center field, and Mathis is under it to make the ground. One retire. That's one down, but that's going to bring up Williams now. Star center fielder for the Irish. Only one for three so far on the day. Williams sends it deep. Is it fair? It is foul. Wow, a stadium to their feet. An absolute rocket off the bat. A one, Williams out in front of it. And the wind might have again pushed that one past the foul pole. And nearly sent this stadium into hysterics. 0-2 in the dirt. Gets by Gerald. One, two. Foul back. Tag applied. Two retired here. Wow, and so Williams gets taken down via the strikeout, but if he just had straightened out that long fly ball, this ball game would have been over. David Glancy now. Looks at a strike down the heart of the plate. Lancey is no stranger to the long ball himself. Ten bombs on the year. A one. Low on Glancy. He's had singles in his past two at-bats. In the eighth and the ninth. Come around and score. Swing and a miss. Clancy out in front of it. Now a 2-2 count. Two two. Clancy high chopper that goes foul by the third base back. Two is fouled into the netting. Lansini sporting 10 home runs on this season. 32 RBIs. It's been a shining star in this Notre Dame lineup. The 2-2 is low. Now a full count. Full count, two outs, 
Tied in the tenth. This is what you look for. Fouled off by Glancy. We'll do it again full. Tied up at 11 against the number two team in the country as the Irish try to avoid a sweep. Pitch misses and Glancy works the walk to bring up Estevan Moreno who had the homer to give life in the ninth on the three run shot. Moreno has three career games with three homers. So his homers tend to come in bunches. But before we get to that, it looks like they're going to have yet another arm change. Eric Bakich. The time. If there's anyone you need a game where he has bunches of homers, it is Esteban Moreno. Moreno, grounder over to Hinderleiter, who fires Crichton at first. Call your friend, send a tweet. And now he'll go up against Bassetta, who fouls one away. Bassetta's first plate appearance of the day today as he came in for Lackey after the defensive change in left field. Back in the seventh. A one, one grounded hard over to Hanks from the backhand, pulling off Han from first. The leadoff man here in the 11th is aboard for the Tigers. And so a tough play there for Hanks moving over at second base. He had to try to get over there and slow roll and make a throw across his body. Not easy to do. And that pulls Han off and puts the first run around base. Pitch in for strike. Blauser. Blauser taps it over to Moreno to third. They get one and they don't get two. Can't beat the running Blauser down the first base line, but the Irish get the leadoff man. Close play over there at first. Smooth fielding by Moreno moving over to third. Kind of an errant throw that forced Hinks to have to reach out, but. And now we'll wait to get a call as it will still be out at second after so the review. And the, the review was based off the second play. You can see there, Inks makes an athletic ploy to reach out there and grab that kind of Aaron throw from Moreno and still fired across the diamond. And he drags his toe along with him. Also have a pinch runner. It'll be Devin Parks, the pinch runner for Blouser. Slally checks back. Parks comes in sliding. Trying to catch the new runner on the base pass, sleeping. Oh, 
breaking ball in for strike. A one upstairs. Ball one. Misses inside. Close spot there. And there's been a lot of those calls today that have been really close on the outside corners of the strike zone today. The check back gets away from Hahn. Parks now to second base and in scoring position. So a costly failed pickoff attempt there. As it's a poor throw by Lally and Hahn isn't able to block it in front of him. And so now, as you mentioned, a runner moved into scoring position with only one out. Two one to purify. This is off the plate. Three one count here to come from Lally and catches the outer part of the zone. Purify has to walk back into the box. He thought it was his final pitch. Payoff pitch. Misses and it's a walk for Purify putting runners at second and first. A couple really close pitches on the outside parts of the zone and that at bat. Did not go Lely's way. And so he struggled with control at times this year. Has to find a way to barrel down here. Popped up in the infield. Hinks is under it, infield fly called two away. Much needed out there for Lally to get a quick one. And two down now in the 11th. Brings up Jack Crichton. Runner in scoring position. Here in the top of the 11th. Pitch inside to him. 1 0. Breaking ball that Spence lays out for. Does a great job keeping it in front of him. Understanding that a pass ball at this juncture that's could be a big, costly. That's a big dive right there to keep that one in and avoid the runner advancing 90 feet and only being 90 feet away from home. 2-0. In for strike. Another strike. Well, he's battled back here to make it a 2-2 count. Two-two pitch, grounded. Over to Penny, backhands from the throw and it gets away from Hahn. Coming in to score 
will be Parks. They'll wheel in another and coming in sliding, and the ball's going everywhere, and it's two runs here for Clemson in the top of the 11th. And punishes the Irish. Breaking ball on Hull, in for strike, and Crichton stands at third now with the ball moving all over the place. On one, off the plate, Spence doing a good job to go grab it. Breaking ball into the zone. That's tied at twos. Fast grounder that goes into the netting. For the Tigers, the Irish are going to need two of them. Been an effective pinch hitter as he came into pinch hit for Spence on Friday. He looks at a strike here. Tinney. Bouncing chopper to purify at second, one away. The scoreboard tells a story in itself. 13 to 11, 13 hits to nine. Six errors by both sides in this matchup. And they've had to move to erasing all the frames and using the first inning frame again on the scoreboard as we're now in the 11th. Number back up to Reed. And a throw that gets away from Crichton. Penny quickly around second. He's going to go into third sliding. And now a wild turn of events here. And so it ends up being the catcher who runs all the way over there Jarrell to make that throw across the diamond, and as a result, it left home plate wide open. So some in the dugout were calling for Penny to jump up and head home, but he looked like he might have hurt himself on the slide down. Nonetheless, he's able to get to three, and the Irish are back in business. Now Casey Komet, the tying run in the box, and now Coach Eric Bakich will make the jog from his dugout again. Double barrel in the bullpen, but no one really shows signs of being actively ready, no one's on the dirt out there as it appears just to have been a motivational conversation with Rocco Reed in the infield He's trying to make sure they try and keep it clean walk away with the victory here on the 11th is in the dirt to Komet. Komet coming in. 
has only two at-bats on the season. 2-0. Runs inside, now 3-0. Take all the way for Komet. Count moves to three and one. He's got a hitter's count now. We'll see. Three one breaking ball upstairs. Runners on the corners now for Connor Hicks. And that'll put the go ahead run back at the plate for the Irish. And if there's one thing you can say about this team, it's they've been fighting all day. So Hinks now one for four in the day at a single and has driven in two RBIs. Hinks watches a ball go outside. Oh no, it's fouled back into the netting. Plate. Hinks in the ninth, struck out swinging. Record the second out. High chopper over to Purify. One run is in, though, for the Irish. Now that brings up Brady Gump. So Hinks does enough, move the runner in, and bring the Irish within one. Racking up his third RBI of the day. Brady Gump was in the spot to win it in the ninth. Now he's in with a chance here to tie it. Gump, slow grounder over to McClady. The throw to Creighton is in time. Clemson survives.